Alrighty, so this should be the final session. We are, we're, we're in there. Uh, now you'll notice my first mistake on my top 10 list is I actually have 11 things on the list. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a computer scientist at heart with an overflow problem. You know, I started with a, with a limit counting at zero and then, and then went too far. I don't know how many times I've made that mistake in programming. But uh, what happened is I came up with this list and then realized there was a more fundamental mistake deeper than all of this, and that was trying to do data mining without data. And one of the companies we had, a friend of mine ran for many years, he said he only had only two kinds of customers. He's kind of a data mining company. He only had two kinds of customers, those without money or those without data. <laughs> so <laughs> obviously you want data and money, uh, and that will work best. So you know, I'll explain what I mean by lacking the data, the really the proper data. Um, it's a mistake to focus on training and pay attention just to your training results. I'm astonished at how often that occurs. Mistake to rely on a single technique. I got, a, I got some email this morning. I should show it up here, but anyway, I got some friends and their little boy has a hammer. I mean, I, I got the email last night, little boy with hammer. I thought I, uh, I should, but I didn't have time to extract the image and so forth. But anyway, it's a mistake to ask the wrong question of the data. Uh, sometimes the way you look at the data and the, way, the question you're answering is not really what you're interested in. So we'll look at that in details. It's a mistake to listen only to the data. This is really a subtle and powerful mistake, but uh, because the whole point of data mining is to let the data speak, is to listen to the data, find the patterns that are in the data, don't bring as many of your preconceived notions to the data. But the point is, you have common sense and the computer doesn't. If you don't have some input into what's going on and how that data got there and what the context is, you need that information from outside of the data. So you really, you really need that. So I'll show an example of that. This is a very common mistake to accept leaks from the future, to let information that wasn't available at that time. For instance, a lot of data warehouses are set up mostly for billing. Most databases and companies are for billing purposes. And for billing purposes, you kind of want to have the latest address and marital status and you know where the name has changed or so forth. But then if you use that same information to data mine, you might miss the fact that when you accepted that person as a client, they lived in, you know, in the city rather than in the suburbs, they weren't married, you know, they had different characteristics. So you have to kind of date stamp your information and keep, how can I recover what was known at the time? All right, it's a mistake to discount pesky cases, to throw away those outliers. It's a mistake to extrapolate. And by that I have some, I've overloaded that concept, I guess, to use uh, computer science lingo. I mean, I mean a lot of things by that word extrapolate, so I'll get to that and explain what I mean there. It's kind of extrapolate in terms of your belief. I think something's going to work, and therefore I kind of ignore evidence to the contrary. Uh, they say that that's how you choose cars. You know, you choose one emotionally, and then you look for evidence to, to rationalize your choice. So, uh, you know, you don't want to do that with data mining. You want to, you want to have it be evidence-based. It's actually a mistake to answer every inquiry. Um, and I'm not talking about here like if you're married or something, but I'm talking about if, uh, if your model is asked, hey, what's the value here? It should occasionally say, I have no idea. I mean, my evidence base is not good for that. And it needs a way, it needs that mechanism kind of built in. Otherwise, you'll lead to crazy estimates, which will reduce the confidence in your modeling very big. It's a mistake to sample casually. I mean, you've got to be careful how you sample the data and that's questions have come up a couple of times about sampling and, and whether you include certain cases or not and, and whether you stratify or not. And then lastly, it's a mistake to actually believe your model. <laughs> so uh, these are meant to be a little bit controversial in some cases. And um, I do teach a four-hour version of this where I, I talk about the mistake and how to avoid it. So you guys have learned a lot of the how to avoid it part already. So this is acting just as a cap on the, the lessons you'll see you'll see some things that, that'll sound familiar.